Good morning. Good to be with you this morning and look at the beautiful sunshine that we have. I'm sure yesterday too you were glorying in that sunshine as I was. It was a wonderful day. And as we revel in the sunshine and feel good about that and anticipate that spring is coming, we also want to um, remind you to keep in your prayers the community, especially in Christchurch, New Zealand, as they have experienced the major tragedy there with the shooting in the two mosques. Um, this is not the first of uh, shootings around the countries and around the world, but um, certainly this last week has been a tragedy with up to 50 people killed and more injured in that tragedy. So please keep them in your prayers, and we'll be talking more about that later. As we get started this morning, it's a wonderful time to be here. We are in the second week of Lent, and it is good to be with you this morning. As we get started today, also for those of you that happen to be of Irish descent, happy St. Patrick's Day. I am not really Irish, but I've got kind of green shoes on, so that's my nod to you. Um, but it's good, to, it's good to be here with you to celebrate, and if you are celebrating later today, please be mindful and careful as you celebrate. As we get started this morning, I invite you to stand and join in the order for confession and forgiveness as we cleanse our hearts and minds and prepare to receive God in worship. <clears throat> Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the season of Lent, we are called to return to the Lord with all our heart. Let us confess our sins and seek reconciliation with God and neighbor. Merciful God, you sent Jesus to, to save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We fail in love, neglect justice, and ignore your truth. Have mercy on us and wash away our sin. Create in us clean hearts for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn. It's number 719. And we will sing verses 1, 2, and 6. The immeasurable grace of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all people into your arms. Shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. morning. The reading is from the 15th chapter of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? And him, bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, to your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the psalm responsively, so please um, look and turn to the um, psalm for week two of Lent. 
in the psalm booklet that's in your pew. And um, we'll, the choir will sing the um, refrain through once first, and then we'll repeat it, and then we'll go to the verses. <laughs>
please stand as you're able to receive the gospel. Gospel according to Luke, the thirteenth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to the second week of Lent and we have this lesson in here, this gospel lesson that kind of is a lament. Jesus laments for the city. He is crying out for the city of Jerusalem. A lament for a city that's in turmoil. And it sounds like something that could be done today. Maybe we better back up and find out what's been happening right before this. Because Jesus has been in the synagogues, he's been teaching, he's been around the countryside, he's gathered crowds, sometimes of thousands, to gather and hear him and his teaching. He's been healing, he's been doing all of these things, these good works, and the word has gotten out, not only in the countryside, but in Jerusalem. And it's a little bit unsettling. It's a little bit unsettling because it bodes for some change, and change, like we've talked about before, is never comfortable. So here is Jesus in the midst of all of this, and teaching in the synagogues, doing his healings, and he's been critiqued before. One time, right before this, as he's teaching in the synagogue, a woman comes up and he heals her. And then he's critiqued. What are you doing? Work on the Sabbath? Are you healing on the Sabbath? That's work, which was not according to the rules. And Jesus voted against that and said, this person's been in pain. This person's been in trouble. Why would I not heal them? Doesn't fit the rules. Looks like something's different here. And people are upset. The Pharisees... The Pharisees in Luke are kind of hit or miss. Luke portrays them certainly, probably the best word is fickle. Sometimes they're with him and sometimes they're against him, critiquing all the things, but sometimes it's okay. And they want to learn too. And as we come to this part of the gospel, it seems like the Pharisees are getting scared. Scared for themselves and somewhat of a fear for him. So the Pharisees come and say, you better get away from here. Herod has a plot to kill you. You better go. And Jesus is not deterred. So we kind of look at the Pharisees. Are they trying to get him away from his mission, which is here, of teaching and preaching and healing? and telling people about the kingdom of God? What's going on? But I guess when we begin to talk about it, then we have to look at Herod. Herod, who is the ruler of the day there, and Herod, 
who is the one that Jesus calls Fox. Now, in our day, to be called kind of foxy is not that bad, is it? Really? Ooh, she's a foxy lady. And you kind of think, oh, yeah, I sort of am kind of foxy lady. But we have to look at foxes a little bit closer. And so we have animals in this lesson today, and we need to get a profile of them. And the fox, to be called a fox, especially in Jesus' time, was not that complimentary. And when you think about it, talk to farmers, that, especially farmers that raise chickens, because hens and chicks are next on the list for today's gospel. And if you talk to them, they will tell you foxes are the enemy. And they will do everything they can to keep the foxes away from the hen house and away from those newborn chicks. Because foxes don't just kill because they're hungry. They kill to cause chaos. And that's what's behind it. The chaos that's coming. Jesus knows it's coming and correctly probably portrays here it as this fox. Go tell that fox for me. Listen. I'm continuing to do my work here today and tomorrow and the day after, and then, and then I'll go. And then I will not darken this time again until, and here's the foreshadowing, until you welcome me with those words, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you remember that that's what happens on Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, where we wave palm branches and have that, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, blessed is he. And there's that word fickle again. Because from Palm Sunday, as we move through the week, the temperature of the crowd and the temperament of the crowd changes. It changes dramatically because by the end of the week, they're calling out, crucify him, crucify him. When before it was, welcome, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The lament that Jesus has here for Jerusalem, for Jerusalem and its people, is a true cry from his heart. Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how long have I desired to gather you under my wings like a hen gathers her chicks? I checked in with some of our friends, my pastor friends on the internet, and someone asked for some interesting facts or some insight into hens and chicks. And here was one response. Hello from farmer slash pastor. Didn't know pastors could be farmers, huh? Chicks have a few basic instincts, but minimal common sense. The first few weeks are especially crucial when they're young, before they feather out. They have trouble keeping warm, and they can't regulate their own body temperature. When ordering chicks through the mail, we have to order a minimum of 30 just so there's enough shared body heat for them to survive the trip. However short, regardless of the season. And then a heat lamp has to stand in for the missing mama. Modern hybrids don't have much mother sense, but older breeds, especially bantam hens, are famously broody. Do you ever know what that meant, a broody hen? A broody hen is what Jesus is talking about. The broody hen that gathers them, gathers the chicks and wants to keep them there. Super protective, constantly pulling the chicks underneath themselves, willing to brave harsh winds or torrential downpours if needed to keep the chicks safe under them. They also pull the chicks under themselves if they detect a threat such as a fox creeping near or a hawk flying overhead. 
Jesus has this image that he gives to people that would have been very familiar with chicks and hens. Probably out here in the suburbs of Bartlett, we're not quite so familiar with farming things and keeping animals and all sorts of things like that, but Jesus' audience would have understood Jesus compared himself to the broody hen. I want to protect you. I want to keep you safe from danger. I want to keep you under my wings. And Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you've been so fickle. You've gone this way and that, and I can see that that will continue. We are in kind of a fickle world, as it were, today faced this week with yet another tragedy and shooting, this time in New Zealand, and it seems very far away maybe, but maybe not so much with the advent of the internet and our global connections. And I've been keeping touch with a pastor down in New Zealand who is very weary, very weary of chores and things in her own parish but then of trying to support those in the neighboring synagogues and the mosques in Christ Church. It's not only mosques. The mosques, shooting in the mosques this week are an echo of what happened in Pittsburgh in the synagogues, in the Sikh temple in Wisconsin, in Charleston, South Carolina, in a church, in a Buddhist temple in Arizona. Where do we go to get away from this? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how much have I longed to gather you under my wings? The answer lies right within us. It's that theme that we talked about this last Wednesday for Lenten services about love casting out fear. It happens one small thing with one person at a time. We may think we're very small and insignificant, but we are not. Because the only thing that can conquer hate is love. And small acts and pieces of love spread in the world today can conquer hate. Maybe it's holding the door open for someone. Those acts of mercy, giving someone a phone call, letting someone in on the freeway, or merging on Route 59 instead of having your own way. Small acts of love continue and will always overcome hate and evil. And we all need to do our part because we are like those chicks. We haven't quite feathered out yet. We don't have a lot of common sense sometimes. We have some instincts, but we need to learn from that mother hen. Although this week has brought us more tragedy in the world, it can also bring more love. For people across the globe have lit candles and joined in prayer. People have reached out in their own communities to protect all people. We too are part of that community. This week, as you walk on this Lenten journey one more week, remember that acts of love, however small, go to building a community of love a community of compassion, a community of care that reaches out to protect all people. 
May we all walk in love this week and remember those who grieve and mourn. Amen. I invite you to join in the hymn for this day and thinking of God as that mother broody hen that seeks to gather us. It's number 769. If you but trust in God to guide you, please stand as you are able. We continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Seeking the grace, mercy, and love of Almighty God, we offer our prayers for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Compassionate God, call your people to stand firm as citizens of heaven. As we are humbled by your wondrous love, nurture such mercy in our hearts and ministries. Lord, in your mercy. Drown out the terror in the world with acts of loving kindness and generosity. Release political leaders from pride and fear to act justly and to serve citizens. We remember today all those in Christ Church, New Zealand, and pray especially for the victims and families of the shooting. Help us all to change our world with love and repel hatred. Lord, in your mercy. Rush to answer those who cry out to you in time of trial. Give shelter to your vulnerable children and cover them in the comfort of your mothering wings. Lord, in your mercy. Build up your holy community of saints through the work of bishops and missionaries. Spread your word through your people for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Reveal your will as you receive our prayers and conform our ways to your ways through the saving work of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share God's peace. We continue our worship bringing forward our tithes and offerings so that the word of God and the love of Christ may continue to spread out from this place throughout our community and the world.
invite you to stand as you are able. And pray. Generous God, you feed us with the harvest of the land, and you provide for our every need. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor, and transform them into a feast that welcomes all. Through Jesus Christ, our host and guest. Amen. The Lord be with you. should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joins us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his life, death, and resurrection, we wait for that time when salvation will come to all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit upon this holy food and on all the baptized gathered here for this feast. Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. For through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready. 
Jesus, the host, invites you to come and feast. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you forward. Communion this day is with bread and individual cups. Receiving the bread into your hand, you may select a cup from either the outer rings, the darker liquid is wine. The inner rings, the lighter liquid is non-alcoholic. Gluten-free bread is also available.
and as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you've called us to your table and fed us with holy food and drink. Now send us out into the world among the foxes and all others in the world today. Help us to be chicks that are smart and wise and continue to guide and direct us as we seek to bring your love to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a couple of announcements as we dismiss today. First of all, a reminder that um, we continue the work of Christmas during Lent by giving back and giving out. And um, your suggestions for week two are to bring in um, used eyeglasses that you don't wear anymore, prescription eyeglasses, or used or new sunglasses, and put them in the box there. Those will be donated um, and continue to go down to countries where they will be um, gratefully accepted. Also, um, any monetary donations then will go to the student organization, the Student Volunteer Optometric Association at the um, Illinois College of Optometry, and they will be using that on the mission trips that they take. So those are the things. If you need a card for all the things happening d during this season of Lent, I'm sure there are some still out there. Also, take a note of you the Living News Weekly and the rest of the announcements that are there that need your attention. This is uh, winding up on the last weeks of fundraisers for um, the adult mission trip for the Lou Malnati's coupons, the high school youth selling the hanging baskets of flowers that'll be here, and other things that need your attention. Bible study continues on Tuesday night, um, Thursday morning, and on Sunday morning during the season of Lent. So please take advantage of those opportunities and continue your own devotions during this time of Lent. As you go out into the world this week, remember even small acts of love and kindness change the world in one small way for the better. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join in our closing hymn, it's number 796, and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful day that we have been given as a gift. If you're going out to celebrate, be wise and be careful.
Go in peace, remember the love. Thanks be to God.